So you're not gonna believe this. Apparently now they're saying that 70% of gamers and you guys are LGTV. Yeah, they're saying that. Like the video if you think that's not true. Dislike the video if you if you think that's true. And apparently this is part number two. This is a sequel video. And as uh, you guys know, sequels are always the worst. Uh, you know, we had Last of Us 2, right? Abbyzilla. But uh, to understand what's to come and to mentally prepare you for what's to come, I think this is what you need to know so insomniac narrative director apparently discussed the fact that they need more representation because there's lack of lgtv representation simply put the next wolverine game is gonna be woke uh yeah surprise surprise we covered that in part one and apparently elon musk also came out talks about the bbc samurai uh yeah i don't want to recap super uh, super deep but apparently a lot of people thought that it was gonna be a bbc samurai with, with like a family in japan it's gonna be wholesome but now they have changed the bbc samurai as well uh elon musk responds by saying dei kills art because the bbc samurai he loves the dudes right now apparently allegedly that's uh not even allegedly they confirmed that and now this is where we are this is where we are roll it Q in this video so so, LGBTQ people won't buy games for studios that apparently abuse their LGBTQ workers. Right. Which is just a straight up lie because The Last of Us Part 1 and 2 are celebrated by the entire industry and their yeah. fan base and those are pro LGBTQ. They yeah. literally have Ellie in it, who's a lesbian that they champion all the time. Yeah. And pretty much any LGBTQ pro game now is doing The Last of Us strategy with their game too. Mm. Lure people in with a straight white male protagonist, then, then kill him. or outright kill them in the sequel yeah. and then replace <laughs> them with someone who's yeah. more diverse. This is also why in the new Assassin's Creed Shadows, they're adding the ability to let Nawe and Yasuke be gay because it's to uh. pander to things like Glad, for example. And like I've said in previous videos, if you don't pander to some degree, your games pretty much, they get ignored come award season. Yeah. You even have awards like games- Oh man, yo, this is absolutely insane, right? Because if you guys remember, Last of Us 2 was like, it won so many awards! It won so many awards because like, Abizilla got her, uh, his, my bad, uh, cheeks clapped. <laughs> Right? In 4K, Ray Tracing got uh, one awards. I mean, damn, homie. <laughs> of course, I'm exaggerating. There was some good parts about Last of Us 2 as well. And, and yeah, it should have won some awards, but it won every award! Every award! Every award, bro! Just because, just because Abizilla was stunning and brave. Just, just because of that. It's for Impact, which is just a fancy way of saying you're Wait, ignored come award season. They even have awards like Games for Impact, which is just a fancy way of saying your game pandered the hardest, so here's an award for your efforts, basically. Hogwarts Legacy, for example, got removed from award seasons because of JK Rowling, even though the game had gay and trans characters in it. All that proves is that it isn't enough if you pander every single facet of your company to the IP, to the creators, and more. They must embrace and accept LGBTQ values or you are thrown into oblivion. Yeah. This next part in the DualShockers article is just wild, man. It starts with the headline uh -oh. saying LGBTQ gamers don't feel seen. Which is a crazy statement to make since you and I both know every game in existence made by Western Studios at least, it, they pander like crazy, like come on. How many pride flags are there in every yearly Call of Duty game? What about Western slop like Life is Strange or more? There's representation like never before. Dog, like what are we talking about bro? As a brown man with a BBC right now bro? Uh, I'm not saying I can compete with a black BBC though like y'all if you're a black homie with a BBC bro That's a compliment. Okay, like I cannot compete with you But but and that's the thing though. I'm a brown man. Can a brown man get a representation? What a brown man gotta do to get its representation, bruh? And, and y'all suckers are crying right now saying that you're not getting representation representation, bro You're getting some of the most amount of representation, bruh Where is my representation? Try be happy, bro. Try to be happy. You got so much representation Bro, what we talking here? Lara Croft ended up getting a uh, sweet baby kiss of death right there. Like, damn, homie. Like, damn, bro. Like, look at that. She was so pretty. And look at her. What what happened to her? I don't even recognize her. I don't even recognize her. Yeah, some of you gonna say age. It's just the age, bro. Nah, it's not the age. You, do you see wrinkles? No, because she ain't old yet, bro. They gave her a different kind of therapy, though. What we doing here, man? Like, can... What... Okay, tell me this, okay? What I got to do to get a representation can a brother get representation like the video if you think i should get representation too uh right now and like i said in the beginning no matter what you do it is never enough yeah. here's some of what mary kenny said in this dual shockers interview and i quote in the decades since this has proven true in fan communities conventions and multiplayer games the glad report tells us something key games are a way for lgbtq people to socialize but it also tells us something heartbreaking that lgbtq gamers don't feel that developers are thinking of them when they design games 
There are so many LGBTQ developers and we want what players want, to design experiences that tell the player we're here, we're important, and we belong, we need to pull every lever we have, end quote. This is crazy, because if Mary Kenny was talking about video games in maybe 2010, this would be more so of a true statement when it comes to representation, but these days, no. Not Bro, at all. There's so much- Every game got representation, and the only game that didn't have any representation was Stellar Blade, and y'all got so mad, bro. Y'all try to uh, cock-block the game, y'all try to cock-block the homies for playing the game. <laughs> y'all try to also catfish the homies. What I mean by this is that you said no censoring, but then you censored the game. That's- that's called catfishing, okay? Y'all seconds really try to catfish us, bruh. Y'all really catfish everybody, so this was the only game that wasn't gonna have any representation, and y'all got so mad, and guess what? It has! It does have uh, diversity! It's a Chinese chick. It's a, or Asian chick, I'm not sure if she's like Chinese Chinese or not, but Asian chick, right? That's diversity! That is diversity, bruh! But it's not first diversity, and guess what? Nobody's mad with it because that's diversity done well, and people supported it. Right? When you force crap, that's when people are like, nah, bro, brother, ew, brother, ew. When you force it, that's when uh, people are like, hey, bro, like, we don't want that. And that's when people are like, okay, I'm not gonna buy it, okay? I'm not gonna, just like how your mind is closed, my wallet will stay closed. You ever heard that saying? Like the video if you heard that saying. Or if you didn't, now you did he hear that, right? So like the video regardless, guys pandering man but the truth is that the representation and forced inclusion a lot of companies are pushing are being objectively rejected by players as well and i would say it's not entirely because people hate gay people although for yeah. some i'm sure that is the case and i'm not denying it the truth is that the more you push things onto a populace the less responsive they will become to it things need to happen naturally and sadly for these devs like kenny what they're pushing is not feeling natural whatsoever but instead intended and forced Dion yep. from Final Fantasy 16 is gay, but it doesn't define his character. Instead, it feels but like a fraction of who he is when it comes to how complicated of a man he is. That is a good LGBT character because his sexuality does not define his every move. On the flip side, we have Slop Like Suicide Squad, which I don't know if you saw this, but recently they showed their next character, Mrs. F and it's like, oh, 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 uh oh, oh, Mrs. What? Mrs. What? Mrs. What? But now, I was gonna say, like, Ballad of Gay Tony, right? The character was gay. Uh, and, and, and yeah, like, that game was done well, and I never even heard anybody complain about it. Uh, yeah, so, it's just that when you force it, and when everything becomes this, when you objectively have a bad product, uh, it's not even objective right now, right? You're just forcing it down everyone's throat right now. That's when it becomes a problem. And, and listen, man, we talked about it countless times. Sure, some of the black communities also uh, disappointed in this one, upset with it. Some, some are not. Not everybody, right? I said that before. I'll say it again because that's where everybody's at. Some people think it's fine. Some think it's not fine. I hear everybody's perspective, but generally, what everybody's saying here is that, bruh, like this game is set in Japan. It's set in feudal Japan. So you know there should be a Japanese male not a female there is a female protagonist but there needs to be a male protagonist and sure you can have Yasuke as a DLC you can tell that story or perhaps not even DLC keep him in the game but also have like another main protagonist as well that's uh, Japanese as well but no 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 we don't want that we don't want that so that that happened and, and yeah that's where the conversation was and now we're figuring out that they also turned him gay but not him even like the female Japanese Japanese protagonist, she's also gay. Uh, yeah, they, they confirmed that. Uh, and we're talking about feudal Japan. It's such a disrespectful uh, to their culture, right? Yeah, what were we doing here? Why force everything? Had it been this game was a modern day or near futuristic, okay, yeah, makes sense. LGTV, whoa, woo, 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 woo. Yeah, you could you could have done that. But what we're talking about, like feudal Japan, y'all suckers are trying to rewrite history, bruh. Freeze. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Quad, which I don't know if you saw this, but recently they showed their next character, Mrs. Freeze. Yeah, that's right, Mr. Freeze's wife, Nora, is the next playable character in that dead game. Anyway, she's now an androgynous person who looks Asian instead of white with a short haircut and a body shape that looks neither right. male or female. And the suit that they're wearing is not flattering whatsoever. This design is peak Western gaming slop. Like, look at this. Come on, dude. But in the eyes of Glad's reports and people like Kenny, this design is likely perfect to them. Yeah. It's everything they want because you can't reasonably look at this design and see anything on it that looks either male or female. It's like Nowe in Ask Creep Shadows. Even AI can't tell if she's a woman because her face and design right. is so androgynous. It, it has like almost the same energy. Yeah, this is what I wanted to pull. Let me actually. Uh, 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 
yeah, 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 you remember, it has the same kind of energy, but still, you know, maybe she needs to go to, or he or she, I don't know, man. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, don't want to assume genders here. But, but like, same energy, but maybe uh, he or she needs to go to McDonald's maybe for a uh, couple more weeks uh, to uh, to achieve this uh, uh, physique. Uh, you, you feel I'm saying? Like the video if you agree? This is what they want in game. How, how many weeks do you guys think uh, she or he needs to go to the, the McDonald's to achieve this physique, this beautiful, stunning and brave physiques, uh, physique, my bad. It's no Not longer cool, pick right? between body type 1 or 2 anymore. Now that same philosophy must further be pushed onto the characters themselves so that you can never escape it. It's uh -oh. like that recent Pokemon Go update where everyone's characters went from yeah. boys and girls into they-them monstrosities overnight. It's Man. deliberate, it's not organic, and it's being You see the curves? <laughs> Yo, they literally did that. They changed a little bit of the color, made her a little bit darker. Uh, like, a little bit of the flat, ch flat chest. Although I don't see too much of flat chest here. But if you pick, like, a different angle, it's gonna be super flat. But most importantly, it's so boxy, right? Like, look at that. This is, like, a female shape. But this is a, a female shape. And reason a lot of people also got upset is because a lot of females, they were, like, I, I believe there's something to do with, like, you can scan your, uh, scan your face and body with camera and you can make your avatar in the game looking like you, right? So a lot of females, when they scan themselves, I guess using a camera, right, uh, to make their avatar in the game, the results came like this. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? The results came in like this. And so, like, the chicks were like, bro, I got a BBL. <laughs> I'm strong. I'm independent. I, I'm curvy. I'm a curvy chick, right? So a lot of the females were like, I'm strong, stunning, brave. But in the game, I'm not that stunning brave. They made me look kind of boxy. So, yeah, a lot of... Uh, I've seen a lot more females being upset with it. Like, we had a lot of tweets and we covered that when this uh, news first broke as well yeah push to up those numbers in reports like glads need i remind you that this has been disastrous for companies like this article which states the case of the suddenly missing trillions in esg investments to give you raw numbers back in 2020 corporations in the usa were investing around 17.1 trillion dollars into esg funded projects hey, a lot of the games coming out recently tv shows movies and stuff that obviously isn't out yet that 17.1 trillion dollar investment is likely the reason why they all exist yeah. Anyway, these uh, can a brother get two pennies or something like that? How does that work, man? Can a brother get two pennies? These days, those investments are down in the 8.4 trillion dollar bracket, which is yes, still a lot of money, obviously, but that's almost half of what companies were investing before versus now. Apparently, this may be caused by what's being called greenwashing. And what does greenwashing mean? Basically, it's companies lying about their investments and profits when it comes to ESG in order to boost the confidence consumers have in these companies when it comes to their actions. Okay. So if you gave me $1,000 to invest into ESG, and I am losing your money at an alarming rate, yeah. but I tell you that you're doing great with your investing by inflating numbers in my reports by lying to you, that's greenwashing. It's basically manipulation tactics in order to say ESG is working, which by the way of the looks of it, I mean 17 to 8 trillion in a few years? Yeah, that's not looking good, fellas. But that's what these pursuits and agendas are leading to, which is basically nothing of value. Companies okay. are bleeding money through their butt cheeks, trying to appease these ESG numbers to increase their scores, and it's resulting yeah, in many of them just losing money for nothing. And then, and, and some studios have to even shut down, right? Like, how many studios have been shut down, right? Like, it's insane. Why y'all doing that? Why y'all doing that, bruh? Like, only to shut down your studio, only to push fans away, only to... Uh, destroy your franchise, your games. What, what, what the hell is going on, bro? You have game companies just evaporating into the ether like Arcane Austin or Volition to name a few because of their ESG yeah, exactly. games like Redfall and Saints Row Remake. Saints and I think Ro when yeah. Insomniac's Mary Kenny Saints says Wolf. we have to pull every lever we have, that's corporate uh. speak for we are desperate to make this work and be accepted. But it's not working. I mean, Insomniac, for the first time in years, they had layoffs after the release of Spider-Man 2. For what we know, Spider-Man 2 costed Sony around $315 million to create and it needed to sell 7.2 million copies in order to break even. By the end of 2023, it had sold around 10 million units. But even then, the investment and time spent making Spider-Man 2 likely wasn't enough to appease investors. Because remember that Insomniac was bought by Sony and turned into a first-party studio in 2020, it was reported that Sony spent $229 million acquiring Insomniac in total. So they spent almost $100 million more on Spider-Man 2's development than it cost Sony to own the studio that makes those games. That's insane. To say yeah. that game budgets are out of control is an understatement, but it also confirms that for these AAA games, they need to sell in the millions in order to be profitable. Yeah. And I think personally, if you want to ensure your game does sell well and doesn't bleed players, you need to ensure that you don't alienate people. And, I think yeah. it's and, and here's the the uh, interesting bit, right? Like, of course, Spider-Man 2 was not ultra-woke. It was woke, don't get me wrong. It has that sweet baby kiss of... Uh, 
I wouldn't say death because if it had that sweet baby kiss of death, then Insomniac would be shutting down, right? So thankfully, it didn't have that. But nonetheless, the game was had the woke elements. But minus that, credit where it's due, the game is actually very, very good. Is it like $300 million good? Mm, probably not. I'm being objective. I'm not the like taking into account the woke stuff, right? No, 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 not even talking. Objectively, as somebody uh, who has the PlayStation, uh, who has played Spider-Man 2018, right? Uh, and Miles Morales as well. Game is good, but is it like $300 million good? Nah, it's not. It is not. Uh, uh, but it is very, very good, minus the woke stuff. But had it been, this game had like just ultra, if it went ultra woke, and I know they know it, they realize it too. If it went ultra woke, of course the game wouldn't have been selling the way it did. Uh, but again, the name, the name is what sells. It's Spider-Man, bro. Spider-Man is big, dog. Even if they go crazy woke tomorrow, the game is still gonna sell. Maybe not, like, super, super crazy. Of course, right, some people and some of you guys are gonna be like, nah, bro, I'm not buying it. Uh-uh, uh-uh. There are a lot of people that would be like, I'm not gonna buy it. I'm not gonna buy it. They're, uh, yeah, they're gonna lose money. But Sick is still gonna buy because it's Spider-Man. So it it's like one of those things, right? Like, I'm super excited for GTA 6 as well. I hope it's not woke. We think it's gonna be, but nobody knows if it's gonna be or not. We think that it's gonna be the good kind of woke. What I mean by this is that the game, because in the real life, you also got the woke stuff, right? So the game perhaps is gonna be parody of that because GTA, in all reality, it's a parody of the real life world, right? So if it's woke like that, then people are not gonna have a problem with some wool. Not because uh, of GTA 6 uh, portraying the real-life wokeness, but because of how much woke crap has been in other games. So, simply put, like, a lot of people, woke meter is all the way up right now. If they see slight bit of woke, they're like, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. B b yeah, b because every game is forcing that trash, and now a lot of uh, gamers and you guys, uh, uh, people are aware of the agenda that's being pushed and shoved constantly. So if it has a little bit of woke, somebody that is aware of it might not buy. But a game like GTA 6, even if it goes fully woke, the game is still gonna sell like crazy. Why? Because it's GTA. So that's my point with Spider-Man. Even if it goes fully woke, it will still sell, but people that will boycott, they will lose money. And knowing that they have put in $300 million to uh, make this game, sure, the profit is not crazy. This is why they had to lay some people off. In the long run, it might make uh, $300 million and more. Of course, it's gonna. But the profit margin is gonna be very, very low. Had it been they didn't mess around with the woke stuff, and had it been that they, didn't, they did not put $300 million dollars to make the game right uh, so it's one of those things so if you're gonna make sure your budget is that high just don't go woke bruh like later down the road maybe your game is not gonna do too well and then you have to ultimately shut down it's different kind of stupid like why y'all suck is just forcing that crap on your fans just make the game that uh, just make the games for your fans for your audience know your audience just make the make a good damn piece of art because that's what it is make a good dang game and people are gonna buy it simple as that if a game is good people gonna buy it spider-man stew case from the forced lgbtq inclusion whatever from the scenery to missions not to mention sidelining peter for miles and the negative word of mouth that came out a few days after its release that has affected sales again bit, sure yeah. 10 million is a lot i get that but yeah. it could have been higher if the fan base and social media didn't feel like that they were being betrayed by insomniac by yep. all of their moronic decisions with the game, making Peter weaker to make way yeah. for Miles. That we talked about that in part one, I will link you. Part one also had a lot of other stuff too, I will link you that. Yeah, it's a superhero game, damn it. If it was like a family game or like a romantic game or something where your chick saved you, yeah, that's that's cute. That's, yeah, fine, okay, perfectly fine. You save her ass and she, uh, you save her ass like 10 times and she saved your ass one or tw once or twice. Hey, that's beautiful, that's cute. But we're talking about a superhero game, damn it. So these like is basically made a way, made in a way where if she didn't save Peter, Peter would have died. Superhero, Spider-Man, Gonzo, Dunzo, Finetto, right? Yeah. Pissed off a lot of people, dude, myself included. Pushing a playable Mary Jane onto us again and then making her somehow uglier with a crimson chin did not Die help too. people accept her as a playable character in the sequel. And they even somehow fumbled Venom and made him not nearly as cool with Harry being the host instead of Eddie. Harry in general, he just kind of sucked in this game to be real with you. Then you add in the- uh, Okay, I, I mean, fair, that's your opinion. I personally thought that Venom was alright, but okay, uh, fair. Let's uh, hear the perspective, let's see what. Deaf girl mission, Miles having missions where he can't move as insomniac forces gain romance scenes on you and more, and yeah, 
it's honestly a miracle it even broke even. It's death by a thousand cuts in this case, and their huge investment resulted in some profit, sure, but also layoffs as well. And remember that while Spider-Man 2 was a sweet baby product, none of us really knew what that meant or who they were At when Spidey 2 came out. Yeah, Had Spider-Man yeah. 2 released in the same form it was now oh, this yeah. fall instead of last year, but the player base and online community was informed of the sweet oh, baby as yeah. it is now, I feel like it wouldn't have broken anywhere near 10 million units, and I'm sadly being totally serious about that. Look um, yeah, if this happened, for example, if Spider-Man 2 was coming out, yeah, a lot of people would have chose to boycott and not buy, absolutely. But still, I'd, yeah, like I'm saying, right, like, it's Spider-Man, the name is big. So I, I, I personally, of course, could be wrong, nobody knows, right, like, it's one of those things, like, it, the game came out, whatever now we don't know uh what's the outcome was gonna be if the game was coming out now now after knowing the sweet baby ink right i think it would have still sold 10 million in the long run i still think it would have been but it's still one of those things like nobody can give you a definitive answer look i love spider-man he's my favorite superhero and i think insomniac is a great developer when it comes to the fun factor Here's your answer. This is exactly why Spider-Man is a superhero. A lot of people favorite superhero. Insomnia Games is uh, actually talented. Minus all of this wool crap. They don't need it, but uh, I mean, I guess they need it, right? They think they need it, but I don't think they do, but... ...their other games. Spider-Man 2018 is still one of the best superhero games, if not games I've played in a while. But despite oh, yeah. them having a rock-solid foundation when it comes to gameplay mechanics, combat, web-slinging, and so on, even the graphics too, it was all great. Mm -hmm. None of that matters if ultimately the story, characters, and the respect of the player's love for Spider-Man, as in Peter Parker as a character, is disrespected constantly. You can't yeah. feasibly be making games that cost $300 million plus and be gambling the livelihoods of hundreds of devs because you want a virtue signal, you just can't do it. But I guess in Insomniac's case it was fine to do because the loss of employment for the people who were laid off was worth those pandering moments in their game, I guess. I guess, and in terms yeah. of Spider-Man 3... Yeah, people losing their, their livelihood, that's fine. We just gotta make the game a uh, representation and well, we gotta do that. Yeah, uh, uh, it doesn't matter if people lose their livelihood. Yeah, F that, bro. Like, what the hell is going on? It looks like Peter will be even more sidelined since Insomniac has hinted that Cindy Moon, or Silk, will be playable in the third game. Why uh -oh. the hell do we need another playable spider person in a game like that? We don't, by the way. But the yeah, only and, and apparently, yeah, Wolverine is going to be one of the wokest game. Yeah, this is something that we covered in part one and Elon Musk situation and a lot more. 70% of gamers being LGTV, that's, uh, we also covered that in part one. And this is that video. This is part one. Check it out, guys. Uh, this video is going viral right now. We have a lot of clips. If you have not seen it, check it out. If you've seen it already, then check out the video on the left.